As small and as feeble as I am, I'm a sucker for big knives. You know, Jumbo, Artisan Proponent, uh, the Benchmade Super Freak, you know, things along those lines. I love them all. And uh, I think it's because, to me at least, there's something so satisfying about pulling out a full-sized and at times comically large slicer to handle even the daintiest of tasks. And I swear I'm not overcompensating. But at the end of the day, I am a pencil pusher, a desk jockey, if you will, and my office attire doesn't always come with the pocket capacity to handle some of the previously mentioned pieces. And those tight and or shallow pockets have unfortunately relegated some of my favorite knives to the knife box, where they lie and wait, in hopes that maybe today is, is a jeans day, or maybe, just maybe he'll work from home today. Well, just when I thought that this problem was one I would have to shoulder and live with for the rest of my life, alone, Artisan Cutlery teamed up with Cerberus Knives to bring us this. The Artisan Cutlery Orion. Arion? Arion? It's, it's a full-sized frame log folder in every single way. Well, except for one. This thing is wafer thin. Like, crazy thin for its overall size. But for anyone familiar with Chris at Cerberus Knives, that thinness will make a lot of sense, considering he's made something of a name for himself in the ever-expanding knife world, primarily for his skinny scales. Aftermarket scales for all of the popular Spydercos that help trim the fat, if you will. A liposuction for your knife. So I guess it's only a natural progression to go from violently popular skinny aftermarket scales to designing your very own skinny knife. And let me tell you, Chris, brother, Dude, bro, what took you so long? Now lately I've been on a large knife kick. Seems like every time a new piece arrives, it's rocking a three and a half inch blade or bigger. And in this case, that S35E in satin finished drop point blade is coming in at 3.63 inches long and opened up the overall length is 8.375 inches. So yeah, not minute by any means. Uh, this is a frame lock, and on the lock bar side, we have this nicely stonewashed titanium and a simple and slim milled titanium pocket clip. But looking a little closer, you will notice the subtle milling lines left to both add a little intrigue and give you just the slightest hint of texture in the hand. But if I'm being honest, you won't even notice the subtle grippiness on the titanium side, because over on the show side, we have this in your fucking face burgundy or maroon micarta scale and boy howdy i'm just the biggest fan of this slab of micarta and for the sake of slimness there's no liner under that micarta so as far as weight goes this beauty is as light as a feather now artisan themselves call this color <laughs> uh double coral red but i uh yeah that's just a it's just a fancy way to say maroon or really deep reddish purple Regardless of the name, I think it's sick, and sandwiched between the two sides is this nice, clean titanium backspacer with artisan cutlery etched along the back spine, and it's it's all very nice looking, very clean, very classy. Oh, and artisan also just announced a full titanium variant, coming soon. So to that, I, I say hell yeah, and also I say what the fuck, now I'm gonna have to get a second one. Two of the same knife, my fiance is gonna kill me. And now, as far as hardware goes, very minimal. Two body screws and the pivot screw. Lovely. And on the pocket clip, to keep the profile as clean as possible, the screws are secured from the inside. So, no visible pocket clip screws. A feature I keep seeing more and more of, and one that I really appreciate. Overall, I just adore the simplicity here. There's nothing too insanely flashy. And I just I cannot get over how fucking thin this thing is. It's so big, yet so small in the hand and in the pocket. And now moving on to that beautifully done blade, the high polish belt satin gives off a nice rainbow of colors in the right light. And although it is a fingerprint magnet, you won't even notice as you spend hour after hour breaking the recycling down into the tiniest pieces possible and slicing up yesterday's junk mail into curly little ribbons. We're working with a super tall flat grind and some middle of the road blade stock as far as thickness goes, but good God, that final cutting edge is so thin and slicey that just one wrong look at this piece will draw blood. Uh, the flat that contains the deployment slot comes about 60-ish percent of the way out the length of the blade, but those deployment holes, they really haven't gotten in the way of material while cutting. And no, that is not a very hefty tip, so pry boys, beware. All in all, the blade cuts just as good as it looks, and the blade steel being at 35VN means you'll be able to keep cutting for a good long while. And going back to that deployment hole slot, thingy, it's been nicely knocked down on the inside edge, so it's super comfy, and the action here is just 
wonderful, as effortless and natural feeling as any of my spider goes. Thumb flicks and reverse flicks are nice and snappy, and because that blade is running on ceramic bearings, on the clothes, that shiny piece of stainless, she comes a swinging down nice and smooth. Very fidget friendly action. Uh, the lock bar is easy enough to access, if just the tiniest bit too smooth on the inside, and because this knife is so freaking thin, fatter thumbs, such as mine, I might have a little bit of a hard time getting in there to disengage the lock. That being said, if you're a drop shutty slut like me, you we're going to love this thing. I've become slightly obsessed with carrying it, one for the looks, and two for that endlessly satisfying and enjoyable action. God, it really is great stuff. The bearings are silky smooth and so well behaved, and there's no excess grit or noise during actuation. And I have to say, prior to this, the most expensive artisan knife I've owned was that brass proponent that I recently reviewed. That was 60 bucks, and I adore the action on that. So I really wasn't surprised by how good it is here. It's really great action overall. And finally, the Ergos. While the profile on the Orion here is not exactly one with any outwardly visible ergonomic lines, but let me assure you that the hand wants to hold this thing. I don't, I don't know how else to put it really. It's so thin that it just vanishes into the hand. And in a choked up grip, you've got really well done and comfortable jimping at the top of the blade spine. So your thumb has a nice little, nice little resting spot. And now you do have a choil, but realistically and functionally speaking, it's a sharpening choil and nothing more. Uh, you can, if you're feeling frisky, choke up just a bit, but overall, I never feel too far away from the blade with a normal choked up grip. And this being so long, yes, the hand size means little as far as comfort goes. Choke up, choke back, you've got plenty of room to stretch out. And yes, the natural grippiness from the micarta is noticeable in use, but if you're an oil man... Ladies and gentlemen, if I say I'm an oil man, you will agree. I, I'd leave this one at home during working hours. As locked in and secure as it feels during normal use, uh, Vaseline free use that is, something tells me that uh, that straight line slim handle won't take kindly to a greasy mitt. It, regardless, it, it really is a dream in the hand. So at the end of the day, considering everything you're getting here for $199 retail, I've got no gripes with the price. Fit and finish are just top notch, and honestly, some of the best I've seen on an artisan knife, period. Again, this is the highest end artisan knife I've ever handled. And all of the little detail work on the lock bar side and that beautiful and outside of the box micarta color, all of it checks each and every one of my quote unquote, should you buy this knife boxes. And if you haven't seen my unboxing, be sure to check it out because the packaging that this thing comes in is both impressive and equally outrageous. Uh, just go watch the video, you'll see what I mean. And now the first run that hit retailers recently went pretty damn fast. And everywhere I've looked has uh, this marked as sold out or coming soon. So if you like the looks, be sure to keep an ear to the ground as to when that next run is coming out because everything about this knife has met or exceeded my expectations. And as is usually the case with my reviews, if you like the looks, you will most likely love everything else about the Orion. Whatever, dude, you like every knife you review. Yeah, well, fuck you, man. That's only because I paid for all the knives on the channel. And I only buy things I know I'll like. Yeah, I know. That's why we've had ramen three times this week, and all that's left to drink in the fridge is a single fucking Miller Lite. What the, what the fuck, dude? Can I finish, please? Huh? Are you gonna let me fucking finish? Shut the fuck up and eat your ramen. Jesus, sorry, don't mind him. He's just mad because I finished off the bourbon. Anyway, until next time, thank you for watching. Bye-bye now.